In this lesson, we'll talk about the radicals. So, first and foremost, let's define a square root and an nth root officially. So, if you have a natural number, and you have a to the n equals b, then really what you have is a is an nth root of b. So, imagine that b is a number that you're taking a square root, and you find that the square root is a. That means a times a, because it's a squared, would be that number. So, an nth root is simply a value that when raised to the nth power gives you back b. It's a number times itself that many times. For n equals 2, we call it a square root. For n equals 3, we call it a cube root. And we sometimes use the word even root for n being even, the n. Odd root if n is odd. The index is the number right here that indicates what kind of root it is. So, say a cube root, the index would be 3. And this notation means the principal nth root. That means that you only take one root. If it's an odd root, then positive or negative will come out positive or negative. If it's an even root, then you always take the positive, because you might recall that there are both positive and negative roots sometimes. So anyway, if it's positive and you have a choice, make sure it's positive. All right, so uh, if n equals 2, this is another way you could write a square root. But often we don't put the 2 and just say the standard square root symbol. The number inside we call a radicand. So let's get moving with this idea. So let's calculate some roots. Right here we have the square root of 25. Pretty much everybody knows that the square root of 25 is 5, right? But what about the negative 5? Negative 5 squared is also 25. But the principal root says keep only the positive one if needed. Cube root of 8. That's saying what number times itself 3 times will give you 8? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so this is 2. Now how about this one? What number when raised to the fourth power will give you a negative value? I'll tell you it's impossible, because for any even power if you take a negative number, you're going to multiply it by itself and get a positive value. So, for any even root of a negative number, this is undefined. But this one is. This negative sign means do it after taking the root. So the fourth root of 16 is saying what number raised to the fourth power gives me 16. That number is 2 and we put the negative sign in front. So let's talk about simplifying radicals. So a radical expression is in simplified form when it fits these parameters. So the radicand contains factors of exponents less than the index. Now, what that means is that if you take the prime factorization of the number and you look at the powers that result, those powers have to be smaller than the index. If not, you need to remove them by splitting it up. The radicand contains no fractions. You'll have to split up your fractions. And if there's a denominator, you have no radical. You might have often heard this as no square roots in the denominator. And then while this won't show up in our examples, the index and every exponent can't have common factors that you can take out. However, we're not worried about that. All right, so. Here is the list of radical rules. Now you can use these rules to help you simplify these things. So, A, B, if you've got a product, you can split the radical across the product. Fraction, you can split the radical across a fraction. And if you happen to have two roots, you can multiply the indices. This is kind of like the rule for power to a power that we talked about previously. So let's see what we can do. Anytime you get a number like this, the first thing you should do is make a factor tree. So let's see, 18 is 2 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So what you get is 2 times 3 squared. And anytime you have a square, 
officially writing it like this, you would have the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 squared, and those are now going to cancel. Square root of 2 times 3. Often we write this as 3 square root of 2. Now let me give this to you in a simpler form. This is an optional approach, but is way faster. What you want to do is think about a way to factor this number into a perfect square and everything else. Your goal is to find the largest perfect square. So for this one, we've got 9 times 2. That's the largest perfect square that's a factor of 18. So now we just simply take out its square root, and we're done. Much faster. Let's do 96. 96 is, well, let's just go the easy way. How about 2 times 48? Now we got it easier. 4 times 12 could come out of 48. That's 2 and 2. 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. That's a big prime factorization. So we end up with, well, let's see. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos times 3. So I'm going to split this up. I can take squares out. So let's write this as 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 for the 2 to the 5th. I still got a times 3. And now the squares can come out. Still left with 2 times 3, so I get 4 square root of 6. Now let's do the easy way. If I thought about this hard enough, I would realize that the square root of 96 is 16 times 6, and this is a perfect square. It's 4 squared. So bring the 4 in front, you get the square root of 6. So you can look at this method on the left, and, and you can use it if you need like an algorithm to do it. But the easiest way is find the largest perfect square factor. Let's do a couple more examples. For this one, first thing we need to do is we can't have a fraction inside the square root. So we split it. Now, 72. I'll go ahead and tell you the easy way, but you might think about it for a minute. Feel free to pause if you want to think. But 72 is 36 times 2. Now we know 36 is a perfect square. So we get 6 square root of 2 over square root of 7. What we need to do now is somehow get rid of the square root in the denominator. And this is the trick. You multiply top and bottom by the same thing. And here's what happens. In the denominator, you get 6 square root of 14. Because again, you can multiply on the inside with a square root. And then in the denominator, you get a square root of 49 if you want to be official, but that's just 7. Long story short, when you multiply a square root by itself, it cancels out. And now this expression is in simplest form. Let's do another. But first, let's take a little shortcut. Sometimes you should look at this. Can you reduce this fraction first? Sure can. 300 divided by 2 is 150. And so, 150, if you play around with it a little bit, that's 25 times 6. So we just get 5 square root of 6. That made that problem a whole lot easier just by looking to reduce it first. And the last thing we want to mention is rational exponents. Now we'll do some of these in class, but here's the key phrase. So listen closely. Top is the power, bottom's the root. Top is the power, bottom's the root. Every time I look at one of these, that's what I go through in my head. Top is the power, bottom's the root. Keep that in your head, and these will be a lot easier when you run into them. So, anytime we see something like this, top is the power, bottom's the root. Now, there's some different things written here as to when these things are defined, but as long as you don't get any even roots of negative numbers or anything like that, 
and you don't have any zeros raised to negative powers, in general this works just fine. Now, you'll notice there's two forms. In both cases, top is the power and bottom's the root. However, one is easier to calculate. This is more the official definition, but this one, this one is very easy to calculate if you take the root first, because it's much easier to take a root of a small number than a root of a big number. So, let's do some. 27 to the 1 third, top is the power, bottom's the root. This one's pretty easy now, because 27 to the 1 is just 27, cube root of 27 is 3. How about 9 to the 3 halves? Now like I told you, the best thing to do is take the root first, and then do the power on the outside. I didn't have to write the 2, it is a square root, but top is the power, bottom's the root. So we get the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 to the negative 3 means 1 over 3 to the positive 3. We get 1 over 27. Now for these, let's do a little bit of exponent rules first, because they still hold. What will I do with my exponents? This is the case where I add them. So 5 halves plus negative 1 half. This comes out to be 4 to the 4 halves, but why make this so complicated? 4 halves is 2. 4 squared is 16. Done. Nice. All right. Last one. So think of this as 16 to the 1 if you'd like, and this time I need to subtract my exponents. So 1 minus negative 1 fourth is the same as 1 plus 1 fourth, which is 5 fourths. This is a case where, again, you're using the fraction, but imagine had you raised 16 to the fifth power. That's big. Then you got to figure out its fourth root. That's hard. So let's do the fourth root first, and then raise it to the fifth power. The fourth root is 16, I think we brought it up earlier to be 2, and 2 to the fifth power is 32. 